Um, Representative McEntee is a leader on uh, uh, issues pertaining to waste. Uh, it is always a pleasure to work with her. She is a quiet but very effective voice for the environment. Um, in 2016, she received a uh, A plus on ECRI's uh, uh, report card in which we evaluate the voting records uh, of members of the General Assembly on environmental issues. Representative McEntee. Uh, thank you, Gregory, uh, and thank you for the Environmental Council of Rhode Island and all of you today. Happy Earth Day, Happy Earth Month. I want to recognize a few people that have come in. Uh, uh, Chairman McNamara is back there. Welcome. And Senator Satchel is here, and Representative Bennett. And I also wanted to mention that Chairman Keeble is here, and he fights very hard to uh, fight against the power plant for you people in Barville, so uh, I think he should be recognized for that. So I was asked to come and talk about the plastic bag bill. Uh, I'm, it was my honor to sponsor it. Um, I want to thank Senator Josh Miller for all his hard work in the Senate on behalf of this bill. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the bill first. Um, what it's going to do is ban the plastic bags the use of plastic bags in large businesses, at, and the date that it'll start is January 1, 2001. There are certain exemptions or, or exclusions, as we call them. Uh, not only will it ban the plastic bag, we're also banning polystyrene. Thank you. I can never get that word uh, exactly correct. I, what we know it as is the Dunkin' Donuts large cup. <laughs> so, uh, I understand they're going to get rid of those, though, the uh, styrofoam. So, some of the exclusions that uh, we have are bags for fruits, um, bags for frozen foods, newspaper bags. So, there's a whole laundry list of bags that are excluded, but the ones we're really after are the virgin white bags that are coming out and destroying our beaches, we see them in our trees, we see them in the bird's nest, as was so uh, eloquently stated at the Environmental uh, House Environment Committee by Meg Kerr about how the kids didn't recognize a nest without plastic in it. Uh, you know, a nest, a bird's nest back in the 1900, early 1900s was all mud and twigs and all of those things, and today you don't see that anymore. So um, we really need to ban this bag that's showing up in our waterways, it's showing up in our fish, it's showing up in our bodies, and it's not doing us any good, and we have no way of ridding ourselves of it. It's, it's clogging up our landfill. So um, what we've done is we've tried to make this as business friendly as possible because the businesses were not happy with the bill last year. So what we've done instead is we're allowing them to charge a fee up to 25 cents per paper bag if they want to offer that option. Otherwise, people bring your own reusable bags. Um, and we've also taken into, uh, we've also exempted from paying the paper bag fee any customer who has a supplemental nutrition assistance program card or a special supplemental nutrition program for women and infants and children. They're called the WIC cards, so those people wouldn't be charged. So we're trying to take care of as many people as we can with this bill. But most importantly, we want to take care of the environment. And if we don't start banning the plastic bag, I mean, it's I'm going to quote from you from Alice in, Alice in Wonderland from Lewis Carroll. And this is about how I feel uh, about this bill and how I feel about what's going on in Washington and the folly as it relates to the environment and all the great environmental regulations that have gone on by past presidents. And I think you'll, I hope you find the similarities in this. The time has come, the wal walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. 
When I read this today, I, when I was a kid and I read it, I used to think it was very nonsensical. But I read it today and I say, it represents the political folly that's going on in Washington as far as our environment is concerned. And it has all the elements of climate change, sea level rise, food, food issues, changes in habitat, and it's all in a nice little poem. So I hope you enjoyed that poem. But I also want to talk about one other thing. Uh, I was active in the offshore drilling issue that recently went on. I put together a letter that was signed by 55 representatives in the House. It was sent to Washington to show that we oppose offshore drilling uh, off Rhode Island or anywhere in New England. And I, I mean, we, ha we have 400 miles of coastline. We have a thriving fishing industry, a tourism industry. We cannot let this happen. And I know uh, Director Coit agrees with me on this. And I want to thank her for all the help that she's given me in my district. I have Narrow River. I have Narragansett Beach. Who in here hasn't been to Narragansett Beach, right? One of the best beaches in the world, as we say down there. And South Kingstown. And she's been very great in helping us with water runoff and dredging and habitat. And it, you know, it goes on and on. And I want to thank Meg Kerr and John Bernard for all their help with me. And the other thing I want to talk about, just a touch, is renewable energy. Uh, in South Kingstown, we have the Superfund site called uh, Rose Hill, and that is a transfer station that we still use. But there's 20 acres of tainted land there that we, the town, it started when I was on the town council back, uh, several years ago. And we are now just about ready to put in the solar farm on this land that's unusable. And I think we have to be very uh, in tune to where we put these, what we do to our forests, and, and look for the unintended consequences of large uh, wind farms and solar farms and make sure we're ready for it because once you take the trees down and you know it's over and now you have the solar farm and we have to be careful of what happens out in the ocean when we have too many of these windmills. We just have to be careful and we have to do it right. So good site planning by cities and towns and I can see my uh, chairwoman from the planning department in South Kingstown, Maria Mack here, and she's smiling. And, and that's one of the issues I know they're tackling down there. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from President Obama, who we so sadly miss at times. Uh, he once said, our generation's response to the challenge of climate change and the environment, uh, I'm throwing that in, will be judged by history. For if we fail to meet it boldly, swiftly, and together, we risk future generations to an irreversible catastrophe. This is our call to action, and we all have to step up. And there's so many simple things that we can do, like uh, recycling, using different you know, uh, organic fertilizers. Uh, there's several things that are easy to do. So this is our call to action to save ourselves and to save our planet. So let's, let's do it and let's get on it. It's very important to future generations. Thank you all for listening to me and uh, thank you for having me. It's my privilege to be here. So that concludes our program. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your participation in ECRI. Go lobby.